In this example, we've been asked to differentiate this function, r then of 2x divided by x squared. I look at this function and realize that it is a quotient. So I should be thinking about the quotient rule and how to set up the quotient rule straight away. I will let one function, u, equal the top line, v equal the denominator here, x squared. The top line, the numerator, is an inverse hyperbolic function. So I should think of the four-step method of how to differentiate inverse hyperbolic functions. So let's start and set up the quotient rules. First of all, I'll let u equal the numerator, which is r than of 2x. And I'll let v equal the bottom line, or the denominator, which is x squared. I need the derivative of each of these to put together in the quotient rule to find y dx. So, on the left hand side, u is equal to r than. We've got a four step method of how to differentiate inverse hyperbolic, method, uh, hyperbolic functions. The first step is to eliminate the inverse function. So, writing down the equivalent statement is that than of u is equal to 2x. These two are equivalent statements. Inverse than of 2x is u, so therefore than u must equal 2x. Second step is to differentiate with respect to x. With respect to x. I notice that on the left hand side I've got a function of u. To differentiate a function of u with respect to x, I differentiate with respect to x and then multiply by du dx. So the derivative with respect to u of than u multiply by du dx. So that is using an implicit differentiation, which is just a chain rule. That's got to equal the derivative of the right-hand side with respect to x, which is 2. The derivative of than u with respect to u is shek squared. Shek squared u multiplied by du dx is equal to 2. I don't know what du dx is yet, but that's what I need as part of my quotient rule. So u here, I'm going to get du dx. From v, I'll get the v dx. Third step is to rearrange to get du dx by itself. So just bring the shek squared onto the denominator of the other side, shek squared u. And the last step is to rearrange this derivative to get it in terms of x. The function u was given to us in terms of x, so the derivative du dx should be a function of x as well. I'm going to use an identity for hyperbolic functions. We use identities, and we use what we've got. I've got the fact that than u is equal to 2x. I need shek squared u. So I use the identity that connects than u with shek squared u, and that identity is 1 minus than squared u is equal to shek squared u. So that makes it easy. Shek squared u, which is what I want, is over here on the right-hand side by itself. It's just a matter of substituting in for the than squared u. I've got than u is 2x, so than squared is 2x all squared. And we write out that shek squared u is equal to 1 minus 4x squared. So than u is 2x, than squared u is 4x squared, 1 minus 4x squared therefore is equal to shek squared u. Substitute that into the expression for du dx, and we will have that du dx is equal to 2 divided by 1 minus 4x squared. Note in this case I do not need to take any sort of restriction into account. We know that we've taken the inverse of than u. The inverse function is r than. And so than u, we, if than was not 1 to 1, we might have to restrict the domain for u and then work out what shek squared u is. But in this case, than u is 1 to 1 function, is a 1 to 1 function. 
Remember the graph of Than U, a horizontal line will show that Than U is a one to one, so there's no restriction of the domain required. And you can see that's the case. We don't need to choose a, uh, like if we were to take a square root or something like that. In this case, none of that is required. The UDX is just this expression here. Okay, the other side for uh, our quotient rule will require dvdx. I can write that straight out here. dvdx is equal to 2x. So I have u and udx, v and dvdx. They'll all go together for the quotient rule for this function. Y, let's write it down for the derivative dy dx is equal to v du dx minus u dv dx all divided by v squared and it's just a matter of substituting all the equations in all the f expressions in for each one so here we have v which was x squared multiplied by du dx let's put it in brackets 2 divided by 1 minus 4x squared minus u, which is our inverse than function, uh, than of 2x, multiplied by dv dx, which is 2x. And that whole expression is being divided by v squared, which is x squared, all squared, which is x to the fourth. There's the expression for the derivative, dy dx. We can simplify this a little bit. This divided by x to the fourth, I'm going to write as multiplying the numerator by 1 divided by x to the fourth. So let's write that in here. It's 1 over x to the fourth, all multiplied by this first term we can simplify. Bring the, two, the x squared inside, and we get 2x squared all divided by 1 minus 4x squared minus, we can't really simplify this at all, it's a, a bit neater to put the x or any function before the r than, so we can just write that as 2x r than of 2x. It's fine to leave your answer like that. We can simplify a little bit. You can see we've got an x on the top line here and an x on the top line here. A common factors for these two terms is, is also a 2. There's a 2 common. So let's neaten it up a little bit more by taking the 2 and an x outside. We're still dividing that by x to the 4. What will be left inside is an x, a single x divided by 1 minus 4x squared minus the r than of 2x. Note there that we've just taken a, a 2 and an x outside of the first term, leaving us with the x by itself. We've taken the 2x outside, leaving the second term with r than of 2x. We can simplify a little bit out here. The x on the top will divide with one of the x's on the bottom, and we'll just get x cubed. Rewrite the answer as 2 divided by x cubed outside of x over 1 minus 4x squared minus r than of 2x. That's as simple as we can make it. And so that's the end of that question. The derivative of r than of 2x over x squared, use the quotient rule, gives us 2 over x cubed outside of x over 1 minus 4x squared minus r than of 2x.